Stupid reactions, you idiots. I'm Corbin. On the first night of Bach, John, my true love gave to me. Show oh. later watch. And, anyway. and a rule number one, you see. It. <laughs> nice. Thank you. I'm uh, smart. And today. <laughs> Twelve. That's a, that's. We should we do should that do at Christmas time. 12, 12 days of Bakchan. 12 days of Bakchan. We need to watch a lot more Bakchan, though. Yeah, just do 12 straight days of Bakchan. Yeah. Coming to you soon. 12 yep. days of Bakchan. 12 days of Bakchan. Um, but yes, we are acting to an Amma Talk Bakchan thing. Hey, something I'm you've seen. Bakchan. I what? have not. Something I have seen and you have not. Oh, I know what this is from. This is going to be the scene from The Great Gatsby. Ah, yeah. Yeah, it is. I have never seen this. Uh, I'm interested. I, I wasn't interested in seeing that film, honestly. When, when I saw it, it just didn't. It was at the point in Leo's career where I, I still didn't like Leonardo DiCaprio. Because he was still doing uh, films that I wasn't really right, which I did. I went and saw it. I, I went and saw it because it was Leo, uh, and I didn't hear good things about that film. Really, I liked it, um, but I have heard a man named Amitak Bukchan. Yeah, <laughs> is which, in this film. At the time, it's another one of those serendipitous <laughs> things where I just thought, oh, they they hired a really good actor in this scene who I've never seen before. Really like him, and that was about the it for me. Really. And uh, it's just another one of those things where India was a part of my life way before I even realized India was there. Yeah, because yeah. a ton of people saw this because, you know, Leo and they had a bunch of stars. Yeah, I remember this. He's wearing a hat. Uh, but uh, let's just get into it because I haven't seen it. So. Okay. <clears throat> then we can talk about it. Even Gatsby could happen. There he is. Oh! Ah! My boy! <laughs> my, my. Whoa! Mm, smells so good. Look at <laughs> you, Mr. Carraway. This is my good friend, Mr. Miles Shaw. A wonderful pleasure, Mr. Carraway. My pleasure. I wonder if they realized it. I see. Yes, Mr. Gatsby's always talking about you. Shall we? Come. Join us for this lunch. What's he supposed to be? A big wig, like gang gotcha guy. There's the hat. Why is Jay Z playing? He keeps his mouth shut or he doesn't get a penny. We'll talk about that later. All right, balls, Mr. Gatsby. All right, balls it is. All right. Take care of my friend. Right. Get your decadence. Get over to the See these faces? He's the next heavyweight champion. Hey, my respect to you, Bob. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. You're under arrest. <laughs> <laughs> you be careful now. You're turning into a real jazz house commissioner. Honey. 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 That's the commissioner back there. He fits in the world really well. On the lobster, it's decorated with truffles and fine herbs. No prohibition from a coalition. I need a hundred bricks on them, hundred rocks. I got a hundred trucks, the hundred cups, a uh, hundred dollar bill, real. Hundred dollar bills. So, how is the bond business, Mr. Carraway? Uh, fine, thank you. I understand you're looking for a business connection. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, this isn't the man, Mark. Remember, this is the friend that I told you about. Oh, I beg your pardon. I had the wrong man. <laughs> uh. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to make that call. Any luck, Sam? Why, gentlemen, from one of the finest families in the Midwest. Uh, sadly, you're dead now. When I first made the pleasure of Mr. Gatsby's acquaintance just after the war, well, I knew I discovered a man of fine breeding, of all you, such medals, and, and an Oxford man. 
You know Oxford? Yes, I've heard of it. Then you would know that when it comes to married women, a man like this can be trusted with a friend. With someone like you, he'd never so much as look at your wife. I'm not married. But you work on Wall Street, right? Yes. Look at that, my type finest specimen of human more. Gentlemen, everything all right? Yes, yes, we, we were just talking about other people's wives. Other people's wives? <laughs> yes. Well, really? my work here is done. I'm gonna <laughs> leave you gentlemen to talk about your sports and your women. Other people's wives. Hello, ladies. Ooh. <laughs> Who is he anyhow? An actor? My no. He's a gambler. He's the man who fixed the 1919 World Series. Fixed it? Fixed it. Well, how do you manage that? Saw the opportunity, I suppose. He's a very smart man. Got a hundred jumps, a hundred cups, a hundred dollar bill, real. Interesting. Also, Toby Maguire does not have the privilege of acting alongside of Amitak Bakshan. <laughs> That's it, offensive it, to me. <laughs> it's offensive to me. It hurts that little, doesn't it? Toby fucking Maguire <laughs> was acting alongside Amitak Bakshan. Yeah. And it, it upsets me to my core. I know. Uh, I know. That and I do, is terrible. I do think... It, it, I, I would be shocked if Leo wasn't fully aware of who he was on set with for two reasons. Well, he might have been told. I don't know. If I maybe, don't know. You don't think so? Maybe. I think he would have known coming in for two reasons. One, Leo's, man, Leo's loved films since he was a little kid. Mm -hmm. But I think because of his uh, relationship with Martin Scorsese, which was pre this, uh, it wouldn't surprise me that they talked. Why wouldn't you talk film and shop with Martin Scorsese? At some point, there had to have been conversation about that. I, I, would, I could imagine Marty found out that he was doing the film and Big B was on set and Marty would have known exactly who that was. Mm. I would be shocked. But clearly, and Leo, I think, he might not have even known on the day and then realized who he was going to be working with that day and was told by everybody, we, we have this legend from Indian cinema coming. It may have been that So he wasn't supposed to be Indian in this? No. He was supposed to be Jewish. He, I don't know what his ethnicity was supposed it's to be. He was superstar Amitak Bakshan as a flamboyant Jewish, Jewish gambler. gambler. Did, well, did you notice the work? I, that's why I said at one point, I went, wow, did you notice the work he did on his, his accent? Yeah, he did. He did, did strong work. And I actually enjoyed because it was obviously, he was purposely being very quirky, mm -hmm. which I enjoyed. Very quirky. unusual. I, uh, and so that, that was nice to see. Um, also, that he wasn't just put in, and I'm, I'm not sure he would ever do this, a film where he's just the Indian. Yeah, I would hope not. In that um, regard. Like just a one of those in like convenience store. No, but uh, what you saw there is pretty much all he really does in the film. Gotcha. So okay. for a legend to do that small of a role, he was he was overshadowing everybody in the scene. Of course he was. Uh, I don't know what you thought about it when you when you saw it and. Um, when I saw it, yeah. I loved him, mm -hmm. and I thought, "Wow, who's I really?" I thought, "Who's that guy? How, how have I not? Who's this guy? How have I not heard about those this actors guy? that you you probably seen, but you just don't know his name?" Well, I couldn't recognize him. him. Yeah, I couldn't recognize him. And I thought, "This guy's obviously too good to be just somebody they just hired." Who is this guy? Mm -hmm. um, and I felt clearly of the two, Leo Leo can hold his gaze and interact with him. Uh, it, my least favorite thing about Great Gatsby was Toby Maguire. Um, it was hard to watch. My yeah, favorite thing and, about the planet is Toby Maguire. Well, <laughs> I don't feel that way, but I do. He's awful. He's he's one of the he's one of the actors that I have a hard time getting past when I'm watching him. I know I'm watching Toby Maguire acting, whereas I can get lost in when I I know always know I'm watching Leo, but I love watching Leo. Mm -hmm. uh, I love watching Leo act. Um, yeah, so that was that was. Really interesting. Yeah. Um, I had no idea at the time who I was who I was watching. Yeah, that's just crazy. Right? But I remember him vividly. I remember thinking, "Wow, that guy's that guy's good." <laughs> Understatement. <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> yeah, of the year, and it was also kind of strange to me to see him. Um, not because he's bad at it, just because I'm not used to it. Seeing him speak in English the full uh, the whole time. Well, 
And yeah, not that, not that it, I'm saying he was like bad or anything. It's just I'm used to hearing him I talk know. in Hindi. Or, I know or, it was. Or, or it was strange. Uh, <laughs> that just shows you how much, it, especially since he had pretty much removed most of his accent. Yeah, he did. He, uh -huh. he, he had none of his outside of his deep baritone voice. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't because we know him. Big B's voice. Right. Uh, We've heard him speak in English. Yeah. Uh, and, and he, like most of the in Indian actors, has a very strong accent. Yeah. And it, it was really interesting because, like, that's a good description. He was very flamboyant. He was mm -hmm. very different and something that we hadn't seen yet. Yeah. Because normally he plays, well, at least now in his older self, you know, very um, eloquent, mm -hmm. eloquent or just big personality. He was a big person. It's hard to hide Big B's persona. Yeah, just well, it's virtually impossible. On screen, he just has such a presence about him that you he can't not. Yeah, I really felt in that scene that I, I could feel, bless his heart, I could feel Tobey Maguire wilting under the gaze of Amitabh Bakhtar. And he has a gaze. He does. Just the the look of him just going. Yeah, there's just, there's a there's a weight to his presence that very few, it's it's because of who he is. Mm -hmm. um, and how good he is. Yeah, people who don't have that kind of gravitas and their persona just wilt under it. I would like to see if there's like uh, different videos of Indians acting in American cinema that we don't know. I know I know we know a few. Obviously, like, we know about uh, Irfan and, Irfan, and like, Tabu. Life of Pi and uh -huh. stuff like that. Um, but other films, I still haven't seen Life of Pi, so you know, that's, that's that. But uh, <laughs> um, if there's other ones, I, I would like to see it. And I would love, as you know, we, I would love for some actors from over there to break the mold and be stars over here. Yes. Not little tiny Indian supporting parts. Yes. That's not what I want. Yes. I don't want them to be over here just for the sake of being over here. Well, the encouraging thing is we've now had with the past couple of years, we're seeing a change and I hope it continues in the awards seasons of films that are not English speaking becoming uh, the forefront of awards conversations that happened with Roma. Mm -hmm. And it's now happening with Parasite. And I hope this happens every year now and it just increases where the Academy goes beyond looking and doesn't just consider something a foreign film because they did it now with Roma and Parasite. They don't consider them just foreign film categories. They're getting nominated for, for several things, screenwriting, other things. And what was said at the, the Globes by the director of Parasite, he, his statement of if you can get past that one inch barrier of the subtitles, you'll open yourself up to a whole new world of film. And he was talking to Americans. He was talking to <laughs> Americans because uh, it's, we are, since we are so isolated in the world by land, by, I mean, we have Mexico and then you have another basically English speaking country. Correct. Abroad. And then nothing else. And then that's it. Yeah. Uh, and so since we were not exposed, even though tons of people are here, everybody speaks English basically. Yeah. And so you're not forced to learn. Not even encouraged. Yeah. Uh, it's very sad. It's yeah. very sad. Whereas the rest of the world, they learn their mother tongue and then they learn English and maybe <clears throat> one or two other languages sometimes, depending upon where they live and their, their exposure. They always like, for example, the French has a, have a thriving decades long, the Italians, the, the amount of impact they've made on cinema, but they also watch American films and many French speaking people will watch American films with American subtitles. So watching subtitles is pretty customary for most people except Americans. And I, I've, I've, I remember when The Passion of the Christ came out, everybody was freaking out that Gibson was doing something in a dead language and forcing people to watch subtitles. That's one of the things I have that I'm, I, I understand why Disney's doing it, but it, whenever I see the, the Mulan trailer, which I, I, I like, oh, and I, I think know. it looks good, I know it's, just, say. It's, it's just weird to me to see that and it not be in Chinese. Chinese. I agree. I, it's just strange to me. I, I would have, I, I would have loved that. I understand why they do it. They want kids to see it. They want they, it's because they're still Disney. They're a kids yeah. company. But wouldn't that have been so? Would that have not like, been yeah, so cool it, to encourage it, kids to see it and it, encourage them to read subtitles and hear Chinese? That would have been so cool. But you're also gonna not get the money, which is massive their, risk. There, that's their thing. Massive risk. Adults will watch subtitles. Kids, they they won't. Yeah, it's a massive risk, but yeah. it would have been a beautiful one. Have, have the Chinese made a, a version of the Mulan story? I'm sure they have. Probably. They don't like the art. The, no, because we've westernized it. Yeah. <laughs>